Hello, I just wanted to have a quick look at the wheel of the elements and uh, especially have a look at the uh, quadrant archetypes and how I'm starting to see them and how they balance each other, help to resolve things. Um, so if we look at the wheel, uh, we'll see we have the circle of the elements or the elemental archetypes rather. Um, each archetype has two elements, different orders, um, and we have the cardinals at the quarters, and then we have the quadrant archetypes in between. Now, if we look at these, we will see that um, the top right hand corner, we've got the air and water archetypes. And this gives, this is a, um, a series of archetypes that I am naming the ideal in this sense, because they they kind of cover um, in many ways an area of idealism and the way that we uh, access our ideals and crystallize our ideals and um, respond to, to our ideals as well. Uh, so I, I find that a, a reasonable way of looking at this. Um, and you'll see that it's uh, uh, in many ways uh, being a combination of air and water, it, it it relates to the areas which at one time, well, which we still can think of as being the head and the inner, yeah? Um, so this is the ideal, throughout the realm of the ideal. There's a lot of religious ideals coming here, and ethical ideals, as well as our dreams, and our, our dreams for a uh, a, a beautiful world and things like this and also our looking back on the beauty of childhood for instance if we had a good childhood um, uh, so that's the ideal level um, if we then look to the opposite corner the bottom left we have the fire and the earth archetypes and this is uh, a, a section which I'm calling the mortal the reason I'm calling it the mortal is because the combination of fire and earth gives you the vitality and the physicality of the body and if fire and earth are in conflict you get illness um, and ultimately if if the uh, fire and vitality uh, parts company with the body then the body dies so this deals with um, this deals with the vigor of life and also uh, with those things which block it as well so I'm calling this the mortal quarter because it deals with uh, the, the predicament of mortality in some ways. Uh, you could also think of it as a pragmatic quarter as well, but it's very much the mortal quarter. Um, it's the fight for survival and its birth and its, and, its, uh, and its appetites and all sorts of things really in that way. Um, and it's also production. And you can see these two quarters which um, oppose each other here are very much dependent upon each other. Um, the ideal quarter really can't survive without the mortal quarter to support it. If, uh, if it hasn't, doesn't have that, then its ideals uh, simply can't be put into practice in any way. And similarly, the mortal quarter loses its quality, uh, the quality of life that it can have if it doesn't have the input from the ideal quarter. You can even see this in some ways in that, uh, for instance, uh, times which are the most free and refined and cultural often need a certain amount of wealth and productivity to actually sustain that and when the wealth and productivity decline then you tend to find that the ideals contract and we end up back at the mortal quarter with uh, the, the needs for survival and basic life and so the two really do help each other and and support each other and they they need each other in that way if we look at the uh, bottom right corner, we have what I would call the inspirational quarter. This is fire and water. It's the creative quarter as well, if you like. Um, and uh, this is where we have all of our artistic creativity, our expression, our passion, all these things, these things which really bring life into our life. Yeah, Very, very um, creative. Uh, very motivating, 
uh, with a certain amount of instability as well. Uh, now, if we go over to the top left, we find what I'm calling the objective quarter, which is Earth and Air. This is the quarter which gives us um, our sane sustainability, if you see what I mean. This is the quarter which pays the bills and has a look at things and says, does this make sense? Can this last? Can this keep going? And in doing so, it provides the means for the inspirational quarter to actually um, impart, to actually produce what it produces in terms of art, theater, all these sorts of things, um, uh, music, what have you. It gives them the means to actually express and actually physically, but also it gives them uh, it gives them a way of making money as well. It gives them a way of support, so it makes their life possible. At the same time, the inspirational quarter gives the objective quarter um, uh, the reason that it does stuff in a sense, you know. Uh, so they serve each other, you know. Uh, the objective quarter needs things to be objective about and it needs things to actually move so it can do things with them and the inspirational quarter provides all the movement really and the creativity so these four quarters have a uh, um, a very good interdependent relationship with each other yeah and we can uh, see them in in various ways and we can use the uh, the uh, uh, the distinctions which uh, analog used, uh, for instance, that uh, we have the body, uh, the body, and the head, and we have the inner and the outer. Now, the inner is the water quarter, and was most clearly characterised by uh, the enchantress and uh, the angel or nymph here. The outer was the fire quarter, and it was most clearly characterised by uh, the jester and the warrior. The body was the earth quarter and is most clearly characterized by um, mother nature and the slave. And, uh, and the air quarter, uh, and the air quarter which was the head, was most clearly characterized by the magician and the patriarch. Uh, but we can see this is a way of looking at it. We can see that the uh, the, the uh, quadrants have their own characteristics. They very much depend on each other and they help to resolve each other's um, conflicts and dilemmas. Yeah. So for instance, if you've got a conflict on between the inner and the outer, which uh, is very much dealing with the inspirational side of things, if you have this conflict, then uh, you may need to actually bring in the objective quarters uh, characteristics to actually balance it and to help to resolve its conflicts yeah, with uh, with their objectivity and with their sensibleness and if you've got a conflict between um, if you've got a conflict between uh, say now what we would say the outer the fire and the body uh, in the mortal quarter, then you need the ideal quarter, and in fact, the ideal quarter does have a sen has have a rather healing quality to it. It brings clarity, it brings calmness, or it can do, and it does have this sense of um, of um, a healing quality, uh, which can really help uh, the problems of the of of the mortal quarter, and so on. You can go and have a look at these other things in that way. I hope that's interesting. Thank you.